Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you a really simple recipe for one of my favourite British cakes and this is the coffee and walnut cake. This is a quintessentially English cake that you will find in tea rooms up and down the country and I'm going to show you how to make it from scratch. So these are all the ingredients that you will need for today's bake and I'm going to be making it in a stand mixer. You can use a hand mixer and a bowl or some elbow grease and a wooden spoon if you haven't got that either, but sometimes when I'm feeling lazy, I like to chuck everything in the stand mixer because it shows you just how simple this cake is. So we're gonna start by adding all of our ingredients into the bowl. So I'm gonna lift that up and it's such a simple cake. We just chuck everything in and give it a mix. So the first ingredient we need is some butter. As we're not beating this on its own first, it's so important that it is super soft. So I've left this out at room temperature for a couple of hours before I bake. So we're gonna tip that in. Then I've got some caster sugar. Some plain flour. some baking powder which is going to give our cake its rise and we need one tablespoon of this. I like to add vanilla extract to my coffee cakes but you don't have to use it. I just think it works really well with that coffee flavour. So I'm going to use one teaspoon of some vanilla bean paste. Then the star of the show in this cake is the coffee. Now I've got some of this instant granulated coffee and it's a really fine powder so this can be added straight in with my ingredients. If you have the coffee which comes in little chunks, you might want to let it down with a little bit of water and make it into a paste before you add it. If you've got the powder type, it can go straight into the bowl. Then the final ingredients are eggs. So I've got four large eggs. I'm going to break these into my bowl one at a time. And then the very last thing is one tablespoon of milk. Now all of my ingredients are in the bowl. I'm going to put the paddle attachment down into it and start spinning it on a really low speed to start with and turn it up a little bit higher as it starts to combine really well. So our mixture is lovely and light. You'll notice it will start to go a little paler in colour when it's ready and it will all be really well combined. So now we're ready to pop this into our tins. So I've got two 20 centimetre tins. Um, these both have a loose base, they're really easy to push up and I have greased them with a little bit of butter and a circle of baking parchment. And be sure just to scrape around the bowl to make sure everything is really well mixed and there's nothing left at the bottom. And now I'm going to divide my mixture between the two tins. I'm just going to use a spatula to spread that out into a nice even layer. And now these are ready to go into my preheated oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. So I've got my cakes out of the oven and they are cooling on a cooling rack behind me. And whilst they cool down, we're going to make the buttercream icing that's going to go in between and on top of the cake. Now for this you need an electric mixer, it can be a hand one or it can be a stand one. What I'm going to do is lift up the paddle attachment and add all of these ingredients into my bowl. So I've got some unsalted butter, I'm going to put that in first and like the cake as soft as possible. And I like to give it a little beat on its own with nothing else in the bowl, just that butter is really easy to incorporate your other ingredients into. So now we're going to add in our icing sugar and I like to do this in stages so it doesn't get too icing sugar cloudy. So I'm just going to take my icing sugar and add about half of it into my bowl. Now we can give this a beat. Another top tip is to take a clean tea towel and just use it to cover over your bowl. Hold it around here and this will stop the icing sugar flying into the air. I 
That's made itself into a nice thick paste, so we're ready to add the rest of the icing sugar and our coffee. Now for the coffee, I've got a tablespoon of boiling water in a small jug, and I'm gonna add in my instant coffee granules. Just carefully scrape those in. And you wanna stir this to make a thick paste. So when you've got a lovely thick paste with your coffee, we're gonna pour this into our icing. Along with the rest of the icing sugar. And then once it's all combined, you want to turn this up to a high speed and beat for about five minutes until it's lovely and light and fluffy. You just want to scrape down that bowl. And when your icing is ready, you're looking for a lovely, soft, pale consistency, just like this. This is ready to use to decorate and fill our cake. When you're ready to assemble your cakes, you want to take the bottom layer of cooled sponge and pop that onto a plate or a cake stand. Then we're going to spread it with half of our buttercream mixture. I like to use a little offset palette knife to do this because it makes it really easy to spread a nice even layer. You can use your hand to help rotate the stand to help you spread it out well. And then once you're happy with that first layer, you wanna take the top of your cake and carefully pop that over the top. create a little bit of a swirl, but the beauty of this cake is it's quite rustic and it doesn't need to be super neat. So the final thing to go on here is our walnuts. So I've just separated out a few of the best looking halves. I'm just gonna place those around the cake. Pop that last half on there. Then I'm just gonna sprinkle few little pieces of crushed up walnuts or finely chopped halves into those gaps just for a little bit of extra flavour. So there we are, this is our finished coffee and walnut cake. It's going to be super delicious, a really light sponge and all that delicious coffee flavour. I really hope you've enjoyed this recipe video. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to share this recipe with anyone that you think might enjoy it. See you next time.